In this tutorial, I want to show you a new type of material preset I've introduced inside of Marix and Schmick 5 R4, which is the scatter presets. So the scatter presets allow you to scatter whole materials onto an object. So here, for example, I have these seashells and I can interactively scatter them around. So this scatters the whole material. So you can, for example, tweak these later. You can change the normal map. So you have full control over the material. Now, before I start this tutorial, I want to put one big disclaimer on this tutorial. Scattering materials is incredibly expensive. So even a single scattered material can reduce your performance in Mari significantly. So if you do not know about how to use bake points or caching in Mari, then do not use them, do not continue on this tutorial. If you are, however, familiar with these systems and know how to optimize these kind of stuff using bake points, then you're good to go. All right, let's dive into it. In the previous tutorial regarding the new decal workflows in Xenspec 5 R4, you learned how to use these new decal presets. So here, for example, I have like a pile of little seashells and I have a decal material and I can easily move this around in places. However, for something like this, you obviously want to probably scatter these things around. So you don't want to have just one instance of this. So for this purpose, there's some new scatter presets introduced. So if we look inside of the shelf, you can see these blue icons with the three dots. These are the new scatter presets. And again, they come for each different shader model. Because I already have my decal set up here. I'm instead going to select my decal and go to the edit menu and choose the swap node type. Because this is a standard material template from extension pack, the swap node type will default to show you other templates instead. So here I can simply choose my scatter triplana preset. After some recompilation time, I'll end up with this decal now scattered across the surface. Let's step into the node properties and have a quick look around. So the main material settings are the same as in the other parts. However, usually you have now a randomization factor in here. So here, for example, I can randomize the diffuse color. I can randomize saturation, etc. And I have similar options in other groups. For example, I could randomize the normal map intensity. I have mass controls. and a lot of different options to play with. Inside of the scatter tab, you have the main scatter settings. So the first one is the amount. So you can set how many elements should be scattered around. And this is a triplanar shader. So each point of your surface will get a completely unique scattering. So it'll never repeat. And one thing to note is this scatter performance layering group. For performance optimization, the scattering will cut off at a certain point, especially if the elements are really huge. So if I do a large scatter, you might get seams here and there. This is determined by the scatter performance layering. So here I have by default a layer cut of one. If I set this to two, you can see some elements start to come fully into view. So here one is cut off. So this is basically a optimization. So if the scale is too large, it'll move outside of the cell. And just to not evaluate all neighboring cells, I have this layer cut off. So if you do notice seams, you have to increase this. However, this linearly affects the performance of the node. So the higher this setting is, the worse your node will perform and the worse your viewport performance will be. That is, unless you bake it, of course, which you have to do anyway with this node because it's so heavy. So let's find a setting where we don't need to increase this over one. Something like this works quite well. And now let's quickly do a little bit of a height blending setup. So I have already a little node set up here. So I'm just going to create a radio node. So this is shortcut R now in Marx and Spec 4, 6 v4. So let me grab this from the displacement. I'm sorry, I should have done a transmitter node, which is on T. So I'm going to grab my displacement. I'm going to find my displacement here, press shift R 
and hook this up here. And finally, I'm just going to create a new radio node with R, Shift R, and connect this to my mask and hook this into in here. And here we are, we have some seashells scattered around. And again, now I can go in here and make all the modifications I need to.